1966, when I tore that mural down, it was the rise of black power, the black power movement in this country. And I was the representative of the black power movement in this city. What we are referencing today is something that occurred 50 years ago. And what the city is attempting to do now uh, is to replace that uh, mural that was there uh, with an image that uh, presupposes that things have gotten so much better for African people in this city subsequent to then. We say that's a lie. This mural was really a, car a racialized caricature of black people that satisfied the viewpoint of a bigoted artist and all its appreciative viewers. So uh, on December 29, 1966, after much protest to the city government of St. Petersburg, I led a march to this city hall where I entered and tore from the wall uh, a four by eight foot mural that had graced this building since 1940. The city is offering a $10,000 bounty to an artist willing to lie by creating a replacement mural that according to them respects the events that caused the still vacant space where the mural once hung while celebrating the advances in civil rights and inclusivity in the city today. They had said nothing to me. They said nothing to John Bryant, uh, who was jailed with me. They said nothing to Joseph Wall, who was 17 years old when we took that picture down and spent 14 months uh, in prison. Uh, they said nothing uh, to Lemia Green, who has now passed away, or Crawford Jones, or Tommy Williams. They said nothing to us. Uh, but they were going to go about and they were going to uh, do uh, have an artist do something that they would decide uh, represented the events that led to the removal of the mural. Uh, they would seat uh, the black representatives for, from the Democratic parties and not seat the lynch mob white uh, Democrats there. And uh, based on this promise, uh, Africans uh, and others went into Mississippi. This was in 1964 we went into Mississippi. Uh, and organized the Mississippi Freedom Democratic, uh, uh, Mississippi Freedom Summer of 1964. Will the delegates please be seated? The state convention for the Freedom Democratic Party is now in session. Uh, and we went to Atlantic City, and of course, uh, the great white liberal, uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, uh, who was then the president, uh, had. Uh, Hubert Humphrey, who was another great white liberal, Democratic Party guy, uh, along with Walter Mondale, Mondale, great white liberal, Democratic Party guy, uh, to talk to uh, the SNCC and other organizers uh, to accept uh, two non-voting seats, saying that they were going to seat those white lynch mob Democrats uh, there. That was in 1964, and Fannie Lou Hamer uh, <coughs> made the, the, the famous statement that we didn't come here for no two seats when everybody is tired. Fannie Lou Hamer, the sharecropper who had been evicted from her plantation, had come to s symbolize the Mississippi movement. Mr. Chairman, and to the Credentials Committee, it was the 31st of August in 1962 that 18 of us traveled 26 miles to the county courthouse in Indianola to try to register to become first-class citizens. We was met in Indianola by policemen. The president, Lyndon Johnson, he's not afraid of Martin Luther King's testimony. He's afraid of Fannie Lou Hamer's testimony. And so he decides that the country should not see her testify live. I began to scream and one white man got up and began to beat me in my head and tell me to hurt. One you listen to Mrs. Hamer and you're absolutely convinced that there's absolutely no justification for seating this all-white delegation. SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, went then into Lowndes County, Alabama and organized the Lowndes County Freedom Organization, said we would create our own black political party uh, in a majority uh, black county uh, so that we can uh, have our own representation. This was an important step that SNCC took.
1965, for example, uh, after the betrayal by white liberals uh, in, in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, who had promised uh, Africans that if we should get together uh, and uh, come to uh, the Atlantic City uh, National Democratic Party Convention, uh, they would seat uh, the black representatives for, from the Democratic parties and not seat the lynch mob white uh, Democrats. The symbol for the Alabama Democratic Party was a white rooster. And Snick chose as a symbol a Black Panther. And this is where the iconic Black Panther came from. This was, and people referred to it as the Black Panther Party. Now this was a student nonviolent coordinating committee that had organized the Lowndes County Freedom Organization and uh, had organized the Black Panther Party. I was a member of SNCC. I became a member of SNCC and we organized our office in St. Petersburg, Florida and we had a huge uh, Black Panther uh, on our office, outer office wall because uh, we adopted the symbol that came from SNCC from Lowndes County. It was exciting symbol. It was a heady period of struggle for African people in this country. We were engaged uh, with the city of St. Petersburg Florida uh, in a, a serious struggle about just the rights of uh, African people uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, and the fact that they had uh, uh, received or uh, were going to receive something like a $50 million federal uh, grant that they were going to use to beautify downtown white St. Petersburg. And we struggled against that and said that instead that money uh, should go to, towards some kind of economic development for the African community. So we initiated uh, 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 some demonstrations, and when we called uh, for the demonstration, announced that we were going to do the demonstration, uh, some of the traditional uh, black leaders got together and denounced it uh, to the white media, saying that they were opposed uh, to any kind of demonstration, and they came out against us. They held secret meetings. We marched uh, on that city hall. And we marched, uh, uh, we had made the focus of our uh, march uh, this eight by four foot racialized mural that, that uh, was to show uh, this caricature of uh, African people, African men uh, entertaining white people at a, at a beach in, in, uh, in this area. And when we were marching, an older uh, African woman saw us marching and she jumped uh, in, the de in the demonstration, in the march with us, and we, and we went to the city hall. And when she began to speak, uh, the white policemen and the white reporters who were standing in front of uh, the steps where she spoke began to laugh at her. We had not planned to take that mural down on that day. But when they began to laugh at the old woman, uh, it incensed me, infuriated me, because to them, uh, what they were viewing was uh, something that was representative of the mural that they had hanging uh, there on the wall in the city of St. Petersburg. And so uh, uh, I was uh, angered and I turned on my heel and, and, and charged into uh, uh, the city hall and I was followed uh, uh, by Jody Wall, 17 years old. I uh, found a corner on the mural, snatched the, the mural from the wall, and Jody and I marched out of the city hall with the wall, with the mural. Now, that wasn't the end of it. And the point that I want to make is that there was history. There was an incredible struggle that was happening with our people at that time. Africans were being murdered and brutalized, uh, just as they are today, except then uh, we had a situation where the people who were killing us were much more honest and said they were doing it to us because we were black. SNCC was effectively the Black Panther Party. So SNCC and the Black Panther Party, uh, the Black Panther was here in St. Petersburg, Florida, where we stormed the city hall. And then uh, less, a little more than four months after, uh, we saw another group of Panthers uh, uh, storm uh, into a government uh, building. This time it was the Sacramento uh, State Legislature. Uh, and, uh, and they, as I mentioned, they went there with guns. So the, you saw this escalation, and this was a part of the entire process that we're talking about. African people were engaged in serious struggle uh, at that time, as we are today. Uh, but an outstanding thing at that moment was it was a struggle that was 
revolving more and more around the question of self-determination, uh, direct action, uh, and the demand that African people have control of our own affairs. And when it came to that mural, we demanded control of our own image, and we demanded uh, that the monies and resources that come from the black community, the African community in St. Petersburg, go toward uh, that, that, uh, uh, the, the African community in St. Petersburg and said that the white people in the city government did not have a right uh, to depict us in that fashion on that wall. We don't uh, allow the city of St. Petersburg uh, to have the right to depict us uh, and our history in 2016. It was wrong then, and it's wrong now. So we demand black community control of the mural.